So a couple of days ago or so, um, I was, well, I, the other guy that has one of these uh, Cochrane Blys reached out to me um, with regards to an issue that he had had um, as far as um, getting his Brown and Sharp number nines uh, to detach from the quill. Um, I think he's doing the same thing I was and just using a piece of all thread for his um, drawbar. And I I was having some problems with it, but it wasn't a huge problem until I started, until I used this uh, shell mill holder. That thing really engaged a lot of a lot of the surface area of the taper. So when I was going to whack the top of this with a hammer, the all thread would just simply buckle. It wasn't able to get enough force to, to the threads on the shell mill holder to disengage it. So I was thinking to myself that, you know, he kind of jinxed me. <laughs> but no, um, evidently this has been a problem before for someone else. Uh, this holder, this um, adapter, has been whacked a few times in the past anyways. So what I wound up doing was just getting a drift punch and just one or two little whacks and it popped loose very easily. But that brought me around to um, solving the next issue for this thing, which was making a drawbar for it. So I had this material, two pieces of this. I'll bring you in close on them. I had two pieces of this. This was something that came with um, garage door springs to tension them up without killing myself. Anyways, it's mostly just a half inch diameter rod. So I took the half inch diameter rod, threaded the end of it half by 13, which was a horror story in its own right, cut off a piece of hex stock that I had uh, laying around that's seven inch, seven eighths of an inch, and then made me a big fat washer to fill in the rest of the gap. So at any rate, that works way, way better now. So I'm tickled to death with how that turned out. Um, I've got the vise back together. I just need to tram it in yet. Um, after I get it done, after I get it trammed this way, I want to check it this check this surface also and see how it is as far as parallel to the rest of the machine um, as far as the X axis is concerned. So oh anyways, so the boggle with this thing was I my first intention was to try and just thread it with a half inch 13 die that I've got. Well, I couldn't even get the die started. So I started to single point uh, the threads onto this thing and with the intention of going just so deep and then finishing it out with the die the rest of the way. Well, after getting into this a little ways, it started to look like I was screwing up the thread somehow, like I didn't have the um, angle set correctly on my on my cutter that I was using. So after, I don't know, maybe a dozen very, very light passes, I just pulled it out of the lathe and took it over to the vise and started threading the, uh, the die onto it. <clears throat> well, unfortunately, that was easier said than done. Uh, it was just 
I'm assuming my dye is partially um, partially dull, partially wore out. I mean, it just fought and fought and fought every inch of the way. I, in fact, I had to crank on my vise so hard I kind of damaged it a little bit. It's Now it's got some sort of resistance in it, but maybe that's kind of a good thing the way it was before. But at any rate, I've obviously I finally made it through the thing, but uh, not without uh, <laughs> trying to come up with some creative ways of securing the thing. <clears throat> In hindsight, if I would have realized it was going to be that much trouble, I would have made me uh, some aluminum jaws or something that would grip the shaft of this thing better. Because at that point, I didn't have this hex head welded onto it yet. So I really didn't have anything good to grip it with. So it was an absolute fight last night. But at any rate, <clears throat> now I've got the, got the thing together. I've already tried it on the shell mill holder. And it's worked great there. It's engaging about three quarters of an inch worth of thread on that, on the shell mill and on my new... Um, collets. So I'm considering that to be a win. This guy, for whatever reason, it's not engaging very deep. It's only engaging about three-eighths of an inch or so, maybe. So, uh, for that one, I might keep the piece of all thread around just in case, but that's a seven-eighths inch in mill holder, so I don't know that I'll spend a whole lot of time using it anyways. But while I had the vise completely off of the thing, I went through and lubed the um, X and Y axis, which is a pain in the ass to access. Um, so I've kind of made that a rule. Anytime I take the vise off of either of these things, I try to pull the set screws and lubricate the X and Y. And now I've gotten to a point where I will cover up the set screws with a piece of tape so that it keeps gunk from getting into them. But at any rate, now the vise is looking really nice, or much nicer at any rate. It seems like every little step I take forward on this thing just makes it feel like it's newer and shinier, which obviously nothing could be farther from the truth, but makes it feel more usable. And with that in mind, uh, one of the dilemmas I've been having, my own personal dilemma, is the lack of high speed from this machine. So, to the extent possible, I'm going to try to use uh, the larger end mills on this that don't necessarily have to spin at 2,000 RPM, 4,000 RPM. For stuff that I need higher RPM, I can just simply use the other mill for the time being until I sort out um, what I need to do to make the um, mill gearbox run or have a uh, high range, low range sort of setup. But anyways, I just thought I would do a little video on that to kind of bring guys up to speed. The I really want to put this machine back into service, which is, which is why I'm trying to put all this work into it right now. And I just came up with an idea for a new um, tap wrench handle uh, this morning. So maybe that will be... The next upcoming project within the next few days because as some of you probably rec remember I've got kind of a weird uh, thing for tap wrenches basically I don't like hardly anything that's commercially available so I like the only ones that are commercially available that I like are the expensive um, gear wrench versions which I'm not about to buy so at any rate um, I will let you guys go and um, hopefully have some content in a couple days as far as the new tap wrench design is concerned.